Hey guys, so I uh, just want to give you an update on the project since I've had a lot of comments um, asking when the next episode is going to come out. Um, let's see, so yeah, I haven't posted a new episode for a few months. Um, the main reason is because we had a kid and also um, I've been starting my uh, pilot's license training. So I've been flying out of um, Caldwell um, out in Idaho. And so far I have like 25-ish hours. Um, and uh, my next flight or two I should be soloing um, since I passed my, passed my stage check um, on my last flight. So it's a part 141 school. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. Um, but I haven't had much time to work on the plane. So um, that's why I haven't been posting new uh, episodes on YouTube um, but I do plan on um, uh, picking the plane build back up and uh, so I want to talk about where I'm at now um, so you might be able to see on my build table um, I took all of the fuselage tubes off and I put them back in the boxes um, for now and I've been working on the wings um, where I just unpacked the wings and today I'm starting to work on them so the first thing I'm doing is riveting the uh, wing ribs together. Um, the wing ribs have three sections. Um, and in between those sections, there's, um, they call them doublers. Um, they're aluminum plates, um, one on each side. And they just kind of pinch the two pieces of the rib together. And then you put a rivet through all three um, layers of aluminum and squeeze it all together so it's kind of like a splice if you were to break your leg out in the bush um, you might take like two pieces of wood and um, tie it around your leg to make like a splice it's basically the same concept it just makes um, it makes the two pieces that are coming together um, strong uh, because there's a doubler on each side so it's rigid um, even though it's two pieces so that's what I'm working on today. Um, I guess I should talk about why I stopped working on the fuselage and why I'm working on the wings. Um, so as I've been doing my flight training, uh, I'm kind of realizing uh, I'm gonna finish and have my pilot's license uh, pretty soon, like maybe June. Um, so I started in January, so yeah, maybe June. Um, and basically, I want, I still want to build a, a Super Cub, and, um, you know, so I'm not going to stop doing that, uh, but I want my plane to be done a lot sooner, because <laughs> I want to be able to fly it. Um, I don't, I don't necessarily want to be renting for years and years um, before I finish my Cub, uh, and I also want, um, I want the Cub to have like good resale value um, and I also think like maybe I bit off more than I could chew for my very first um, first plane build this is really I mean like welding the frame um, I'm not too worried about like my welding ability but it, it was more like um, once I finish welding all the tubes together I, um, there's all these like tabs and little pieces that get welded onto the tubes in various places and um, going through the original Piper um, drawings which I have copies of um, you can buy um, what's called the Northland drawings that's like I don't know 45 bucks or something like that um, but they they uh, mail you a little memory card that has all the original uh, Piper drawings for the Super Cub uh, as well as like a bunch of other drawings um, that just kind of have been accumulated over the years um, for different modifications of the airframe, uh, like different Alaska mods. So I have all those drawings. So yeah, I, I could go through those and I could um, I could have the, all those little tabs and stuff um, cut on a CNC and then I could weld them on to the, the, um, the welded fuselage. Um, tubes where they're supposed to go but the more I thought about it the more I just thought that's gonna take forever um, 
And, you know, I don't know if I want to sell this tubing kit um, or not. I might hold on to it and maybe I'll do it for my next build um, when I have more experience, you know, building a cub. Um, but I think the plan as of now, which might change, um, but I think what I'm going to do is actually buy a kit from Javron, um, minus the wings since I already have Javron wings. So, um... I'll get the fuselage kit and uh you know it, it's it's a fairly complete kit um there's a lot of options that you can say yeah I want um you know fabric fabric systems or you know I'm gonna buy that separately you can say um what kind of doors you want if you want two doors like if you're gonna put it on floats or just one if you want a two-piece door or not uh, if you want like a standard width fuselage or a wide body fuselage, um, there's like so many options. Um, you can you can customize with the Javron um, fuselages, and I talked to Jay at Javron. It was like only a six month lead time, and I mean as I was doing the math, I'm kind of realizing like you know, like a six month lead time isn't that bad considering you know all the time savings it's going to save me as far as like welding and and all that and even once i would have finished the welding i would have then had to sandblast it and then um and then get it powder coated so i i just think like you know <clears throat> i went through the budget as well and it, it wasn't you know that much more uh, to, to just get the kit from Javron. I mean, really, it wasn't that much more. The other thing is, um, it, you know, going the route I was going, I, I would have had to find all the accessories, all the little pieces and parts for finishing the plane. And I would have had to reach out to all these different companies that make these parts and um kind of put together my own kit which i don't know the more i thought about i mean i knew what i was getting into at the beginning but as time went on the more i thought about it i'm just like you know i'd rather have a just a kit that's mostly complete and i don't have to worry about that so <clears throat> and also i you know i could be wrong but I'm pretty sure you're getting some savings, you know, because the, like Javron, like they're able to buy some of these things in bulk. So you're, you know, if you were to reach out to a manufacturer and say, I just need one, um, it, you might be paying more than they're paying. So I have a feeling like some of that's getting passed down to you. So they can price the kit fairly competitively um, for what you're getting. Um, so anyways, that's where I'm at. I, I'm leaning towards that right now. I haven't put the order into Javron yet, but I probably will soon. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to stop working on the tubing kit. Um, since I'm pretty sure I don't want to go that route for my first plane. And now I'm working on building the Javron wings since I'm going to need those no matter which route I go. Um, so yeah, you might see on the table, I've unpacked probably 90% of the boxes that came with the wings. Um, and I began to Clico together the ribs, like I was saying at the beginning, and, uh, and riveting. So um, I think I'll show some time lapse of that um, riveting process. And then I might um, afterwards zoom in so you can see um, like up close kind of what that looks like.
Alright guys, so uh, as you can see behind me I have a whole um, stack of ribs um, and I just wanted to share uh, basically how it went. Um, I have about three, I think three ribs left and those are um, the tank bay uh, ribs so they're kind of like false, false ribs, I don't know if that's a technical term for them but here I'll put the tripod over here so you can kind of see what those look like so here you can see it's it's not a, a real uh, like a full rib it's just it has the bottom um, brace that goes across and then you rivet like the front and the tailing part of the rib on And then here you can see like the number one rib. Um, so that's what a full rib looks like. Uh, here you can kind of see the rivets and that's what the back of them should look like when they're crushed down. Um, so a couple things uh, I wanted to share with you. Um, if you're looking in the, or watching the time lapse, you might have seen me stop after I did maybe two ribs and I made this this little jig. So what this is just some scrap two by fours I had, but um, this actually helped me a lot. I mean, this was like having another hand or maybe two hands um, because you can set it on the table like this and uh, while you're uh, riveting uh, you can you can slip the, the ribbon here like that and it holds it upright so you have um, basically it frees up your hand so that you can put the rivets in and squeeze them and you don't need someone to uh, be holding it for you holding it upright for you um, and that worked really well, so I would recommend if you were doing this, make yourself a little, uh, I don't know what you call this, a jig or a fixture or I don't know what the technical term for that is, but make yourself one of those. Um, so my wings, they have 17, um, 17 ribs, so the tailing rib number 17, there's two of them. So the the uh, ex so set number seventeen on each wing is the um, farthest out rib, the exterior ribs, and they go all the way um, to the end of the uh, wing, um, and then the rest of these. So this would be ailerons. These would be for flaps. That's how you can kind of think of it. And then obviously the interior. This is for this is the number one root um, wing rib here, and then in between one and five, with this is five, this is one. In between one and five, so rib number two, three, and four are for for fuel tanks. So those are the false ribs that I showed you earlier. Um, let me get this camera. So um, if you have an 18 gallon tank. Um, on your wing, you'll only have two tank ribs, um, but my wings have 25 gallon tanks, so they have three, um, three tank ribs on each wing. Um, and then, what else should I show you? Um, yeah, honestly, like it's it's pretty easy. It just takes a lot of time. You just um, put your clickos in, like probably four, at least four for each. Um, section each um, section of doublers and you take like a number 30 drill bit and run it through each hole um, you're not really trying to remove material um, like you're not really trying to widen the hole at all but you're just trying to remove any like little burrs or anything that are in there so you can get the um, rivet, like slide the rivet in easily and then you just crush it down um, 
there were like three, I think three rivets that I messed up. Um, and uh, basically, um, it's easy to fix. You just drill them out from the back um, and they, they come right out and then you just put a new rivet in and crush it down. Uh, but the reason I messed those three up uh, were, I think all three of them actually, were because I didn't um, put the head of the rivet when I crushed it, I didn't have it flush against the um, the material. So if you if you put a rivet in and it's not flush against the material here, and you go to crush it, there's the potential for um, like once you have the rivet crushed down to the right um, like thickness, it won't the head might not be flush against the um, this this rib doubler which obviously you want it to be flush so that it's, you know, actually providing strength there, like it's actually squeezing the doubler um, properly. So, anyways, uh, that, that, like I said, only happened three times out of like something like a thousand rivets. So, um, <clears throat> but just if you're doing it, something to watch out for um, when, before you crush it, make sure it's flat against the against the material um man I'm trying to think of any any other advice i have for riveting um i think that's all i got so in the next video i'll i'll be um filming me building the um both the ailerons and the flaps so that'll be an interesting video for you guys to watch um next time so uh, if you're enjoying this um, series so far, uh, give me uh, give me a like on this video and subscribe if you want to uh, get updates and watch my um, future episodes.